Hello everyone and welcome to another Upgrade Your OET Vocabulary Quiz by Bose Learning. My name is Sona and I'm a premium preparation provider of the OET. Well, today's quiz is all about period pain. Our female viewers will know exactly what that is and how it feels. I know it's taboo in some cultures, but it's really important that we talk about it because it's something that most women will have experienced. So my questions are, what is period pain? How can you explain it in lay language? That's non-medical language. And what treatment advice can you give to a patient? This quiz includes an OET speaking special because we have a role play that we're going to go through as well with some useful language connected to this issue. And this time it's especially for pharmacists. Now, just because you may not be a pharmacist and you may be a doctor or a nurse or another healthcare profession, then that's absolutely fine. I still recommend that you watch this quiz for the vocabulary and also to just get used to the various kinds of questions you could get asked and think about how you could adapt the role play for your own profession. So first of all, a little bit of information. I'm an English teacher. As most of you know, I'm not a healthcare professional myself. So all the information I get comes from the NHS website. The website where I got the information from is down here, but I'll also put it in the comments box so you can check it out yourselves. So let's go through the information and also pick out interesting vocabulary that you can go away and use and also focus on pronunciation. Period pain is common and a normal part of your menstrual cycle. Most women get it at some point in their lives and if you've had it you know how terrible it is. I'm sure you can for all the men out there, you can go onto YouTube and look at those videos about, you know, getting men to experience period pain and it is very debilitating at times. It's usually felt as painful muscle cramps in the tummy, which can spread to the back and thighs. The pain sometimes comes in intense spasms, while at other times it may be dull, but more constant. It may also vary with each period. Some periods may cause little or no discomfort, while others may be more painful. Sometimes you may get pelvic pain even when you do not have your period, which is very annoying too. So let's look at this vocabulary and pronunciation in particular. Menstrual, menstrual, so this is strul at the end. Muscle cramps, muscle. Note the soft sound here, it's not a k, it's muscle and cramps. And spasms, that's that squeezing sensation, spasms. The opposite kind of pain, which is less intense, is dull. It's just a dull background kind of pain, whereas the spasms and the cramps are quite intense in feeling. So menstrual, muscle cramps, spasms. Now, how can you explain it in lay language? How can you explain what's going on to a patient? Of course, we've got the three phrases that we looked at here. Have you got any idea how you could explain what's going on to a patient? You could say something like period pain is something most women will experience. It happens because the muscles inside your womb start contracting more quickly during your period to shed or get rid of the womb lining. These spasms cause the pain and this is due to a depletion in oxygen which you can also explain to your patient. It's a normal part of your menstrual cycle. Some women have more period pain than others, but we don't really know why. Period pain usually starts when your bleeding starts, but it can also begin several days before. And it usually lasts for 48 to 72 hours. 
it's usually at its worst when your bleeding is heaviest. Now it's also important to note that less commonly period pain can be caused by an underlying medical condition. Women aged between 30 to 45 are most commonly affected and these underlying medical conditions include endometriosis, fibroids, pelvic inflammatory disease and adenomyosis. You may notice a change in your normal pattern of pain if your period pain is linked to a medical condition or a contraceptive IUD. For example, the pain may be more severe or it may last much longer than normal. So pronunciation again, endometriosis, endometriosis, fibroids, fibroids, pelvic inflammatory disease, pelvic inflammatory disease, and adenomyosis, adenomyosis. There's a lovely video on the NHS website which explains the whole menstrual cycle in really easy language and I recommend you have a look at that yourselves. Again, I'll put the link into the comments box for you. So what treatment advice can you give a patient? Well, the most obvious one, of course, is painkillers. And you can take ibuprofen and aspirin to help manage your pain. However, if you have asthma, then you're not allowed to take ibuprofen or aspirin. Um, as well, if you have a stomach, kidney or liver problem, an aspirin should not be taken by anyone under the age of 16. Paracetamol is another possibility, um, but studies have shown that it's not as effective as ibuprofen or aspirin. But again, it's a good alternative if you can't take these things. And then if these ordinary painkillers don't really help, then a GP may provide something stronger. There are also self-help measures such as stopping smoking if the patient smokes, doing some gentle exercise using heat, such as a heat pad or hot water bottle, or taking a warm bath or shower, gentle massage as well, or relaxation, such as yoga and pilates. And then also there are some new devices that you can get, which are called TENS, and they are a small battery operated device that delivers a mild current to help reduce pain. So as I promised you, let's have a look at a speaking test. But before we do that, a quick reminder to say that if you are enjoying these quizzes and these role plays, then please don't forget to click like, share and subscribe to us so that you don't miss one of our new quizzes. And if you press that little bell, then you'll always get alerted to when we put a new quiz or new role play or new OET tip up. So here we go then, here's a role play for a pharmacist. As I say, even if you're a nurse or doctor or other professional, then do keep watching because the information and the language will still be useful for you. You get three minutes preparation time. Here's your role play and your three minutes to have a read through and think about what you can say starts now.
Okay, so that's the end of the three minutes. Let's go through it together and then we'll break it down and look at some useful language and phrases that you can use. So always check the setting. You're a pharmacist in a pharmacy and a teenager has come to see you complaining of suddenly experiencing severe period pain. She's worried that she could have an underlying health condition such as endometriosis and she's come to you for advice. So from just this introduction, I can say that I've got a teenager who's worried. She's probably done some research online and come to the worst conclusion. So you're going to have to do a bit of reassuring and probably a bit of explaining. OK, ask the patient about her symptoms. So we have some medical language here, onset, intensity, concomitant symptoms, which we need to change into lay language. Find out if she uses an IUD, an intrauterine device. This is something that involves sexual health, so that's something that needs to be treated sensitively. Explain why she could be experiencing pain. So we have here the womb contracts, sheds lining, cramping, pain experienced, common for most women. So we need to think about how we can explain that in lay language. That's easy and manageable to understand. Explain the various treatment options. OK, find out if she suffers from asthma. OK, etc. And then explain the various treatment options and then reassure the patient that it is unlikely to be anything serious. OK, what we'll do now is break this down into its various parts and look at interesting language that you can use to carry out this role play or something similar. So if we break it down to the very bare minimum, we get the following structure, asking about symptoms, then the IUD, then explaining why the patient's feeling pain, asking whether there are any contraindications, treatment, and then reassurance. For each of these parts, I'm going to give you 30 seconds just to think about how you can start and ask these questions or explain these ideas in your role play. So the first one is about symptoms. And remember, we had these medical terms, onset, intensity, concomitant, which you will need to explain in lay language. So 30 seconds to think about how you can ask the patient about the symptoms they've been experiencing with period pain. Your 30 seconds starts now. OK, time's up. So you could say something like this. Can you tell me a bit more about what you've been experiencing? Remember, start with a nice open question so the patient can explain what's been happening in their own words. Then move on to more specific information and closed questions. When do the cramps start? Onset has been changed into start and then maybe a question about length, duration, how long do they last for? Now we need something about intensity. So how can you question a patient about the intensity of the pain they've been feeling? You could ask on a scale of one to ten, ten being the worst, how strong are they? How strong are the cramps? So you get the patient to explain to you, to quantify it in some way. And then we need to know if they have been experiencing any other symptoms along with it, any concomitant symptoms. Do you have any other symptoms with the cramping? Open question and then maybe more specific, have you been experiencing back pain or pain radiating to the back of your legs? Now, the next question is about the IUD. Remember, this is connected to sexual health, so we need to approach it in a sensitive way. 
30 seconds to think about what you can ask. So approaching something sensitively, ask permission first. And can I ask? Because this alerts the listener, the patient that you're going to ask something perhaps a little bit sensitive. And can I ask, are you using an IUD? And then maybe explain that's an intrauterine device. It's a type of contraception made from copper and plastic that fits inside the womb. Now, explaining why she's been experiencing period pain. Can you remember all those expressions that we learnt right at the start? 30 seconds to think about that. And here are some ideas of what you can say. Period pain happens because the womb needs to get rid of its lining. Pronunciation here, womb, the B is silent. Get rid of, to shed, to remove, to get rid of its lining. So it starts contracting more vigorously. And these spasms or cramps can cause pain. It's normally worse when your bleeding is heaviest. And actually, we don't really know why some women feel it more than others, but it's actually quite common. So reassuring that this is nothing unusual. The next part was contraindications. Here we go. Think about what you can ask for that. Okay, so you can say something like, there are various ways to treat period pain, including over-the-counter painkillers. But can I just check if you have asthma? Do you have stomach, kidney or liver problems? So can I just check indicates that you want to check something before you give treatment advice. And again, that's a nice way to warn the patient that you're going to be asking questions. Now, the next part, of course, is treatment. We had lots of information about that. Again, 30 seconds to try and think about how you can explain the various treatment types on offer. Okay, because you have asthma, we don't recommend you take ibuprofen or aspirin, but you can take paracetamol to manage the pain. You can take two tablets every four hours and see if that helps. If that doesn't help, then you can speak to your doctor. 
And then there are other self-help measures you can try, which can be really effective. These include doing some exercise. I know you may not feel like doing anything other than curling up on the sofa, but try going for a gentle walk or doing yoga. And you can use a hot water bottle on your tummy or massage the area gently. So these are all the self-help measures. So you explain what they are. So you're moving on away from the medication. Uh, you're explaining the exercises and also empathising because when you have period pain, sometimes you don't really want to be doing anything. Curling up on the sofa is just kind of hugging yourself and staying on the sofa where you feel cosy. But try and do a, some gentle exercise like a walk or yoga. And then you're adding something and then you can use a hot water bottle. And tummy, of course, is an informal way of talking about that area. Finally, a little bit of reassurance is needed because remember the patient wanted to make sure that she didn't have anything very serious. 30 seconds to have a think about that. So something like, try not to worry, most women experience period pain at some time in their lives. It really is very common. And hopefully with the advice I've given you, you should feel a bit better. If things don't improve with these techniques after three months, or if your periods start becoming extremely painful or irregular, then you really should go and see the doctor who will be able to help you further. But see how you go with the painkillers and exercise and you can always come back to see me if you have any questions. So we have a little bit of reassuring here that is quite common, a little bit of hope, hopefully you'll be feeling better soon but as well that cautionary note if things don't improve or in fact if they get worse then do go and see your doctor. Flag that up, you really should go and see your doctor if things don't get better. But, you know, see how you go. And then, of course, you can always come back to see um, the pharmacist if you have any other questions. And that's a nice way of reassuring your patient. Here is the patient card if you're interested. So take a screenshot or have a look at that and practice with your friends um, and colleagues and see how you go. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, don't forget, if you want more help with your OET, then have a look at our Udemy On Demand courses. We have courses for doctors in writing and speaking and nurses in speaking and reading for all professions. And I'm currently working on the speaking course for pharmacists. Um, and I'll let you know when that's ready as well. If you click on the codes below in the comments box, you'll also get yourself a discount. And one more time, if you like these videos, don't forget to click like, share and subscribe to us. And why not watch another video right now? You may like to watch another little bit of information about how to do well in your writing. Take care and see you next time. Bye bye.